Good morning. It's a cold and a little bit grey morning now. Behind me is Tallarook train station and I'm at the beginning of the Great Victorian Rail Trail. It's the biggest one in Victoria, 134 kilometres. I'm not going to do it all today. I'm going to do part today and part on some other days as well to, to make the entire video. Uh, it's the old railway line that used to go from Tallarook to Mansfield. Closed in 1978 and now it's a great rail trail. It's one of the most popular I think but it's it's big it takes a uh, big commitment to do the entire thing there were two other ladies who got off the train with me and they were well packed with heavily loaded bicycles so I think they'll be doing the whole thing but not me today uh, let's go and have a look and see what it's like <music> Well, I'm about 24 kilometers in now. Hasn't really been much in the way of points of interest or anything to, to stop and talk about along the way, but it's been nice, quiet, mostly bush riding. Had the Goulburn River alongside me all the way. It is just over behind those trees there, still following it. You can hear there's a lot of birds around. There's been birds the whole way. Lots of galahs and rosellas and all sorts. So it's been quite nice. A uh, little bit further on to get to the town of Ye. Uh That's probably about as far as I'll go today. But that's about a 38 kilometre stop off from, the, from where I started in Tallarook, so that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, let's just keep going. first town on the trail. This is Yay. It's a decent sized little town actually. Seems to be plenty of shops and everything here so uh, plenty to, to get some food and everything else that you need. It's about 38 kilometers in since I started. Uh, first 25 or so was following the, the Goulburn River and then since then I've just been uh, just riding through farms mostly. But I'm gonna have my lunch now and I'm gonna head back to Tallarook. Gonna finish this trail on in a few sections on other days. Uh, which is probably the easiest way to do it, I think. It'd be an awful lot to do in one go. Um, but I've been enjoying it so far, and once I've eaten my lunch, I'll continue the video on another day. Back in, yay! 
Uh, it's been a little longer than I expected. We had a surprise lockdown for two weeks and then another week where I couldn't go more than 25 k's from home. So it's actually been about a month since I was here last, but I'm back and I'm ready to keep going. Uh, gonna head up towards the Cheviot or Cheviot or however you pronounce it, tunnel, and then onwards to Cathkin where they have a branch that goes down to Alexandra and then it continues on the rest of the way to Mansfield. I'm not going all the way to Mansfield today, but I'm gonna cover as much ground as I can. Let's go and explore a bit further. Quite a substantial train station here in Ye. Old brick building. And, an old, and a freight shed with looks like there was railway sidings on both sides of the freight shed back in the olden days. So, must have seen quite a lot of traffic through here. Last train through here was in 1978, but at least there's a rail, rail here now. We can still enjoy the alignment, even if there's no trains running. Well, here we are, six kilometers out of Ye. It's the next old station on the line. I still don't know if it's pronounced Cheviot or Cheviot, or if it's maybe from French or something. Still got the old freight shed there. Just a skeleton with a few bits of tin stuck on it now, but you can just imagine once with the local produce getting loaded up and sent back to Melbourne there. Back in the good old days, I suppose. Been a bit of an uphill climb since yay, but not too bad. Fairly easy gradient. Still another three kilometers of uphill to get to the tunnel, and then it's downhill for a fair while to Molesworth after that. Let's have a look at the tunnel. Probably the biggest landmark, or most popular landmark on this trail. At the tunnel finally made it since the old uh, Chevier station it was actually quite a bit steeper climb from the rest of the way to here but I'm here now at this tunnel it's been here since the uh, 1890s handmade with local bricks from the area made from local clay 201 meters long this along with the bridge at Bonnie Doon are probably the most recognizable uh, things on the track the most recognizable landmarks I suppose you'd call it it's quite a long tunnel to actually ride through, it gets very dark in the middle, um, but something interesting, it's the only one on a rail trail that I know of that you get to go through a bit of a tunnel, so let's take a ride through it. Towards the middle of the tunnel here. I've got the bike lights on, but it's really dark otherwise. And that's it. Two hundred meters through the Cheviot Tunnel. Now it's downhill for a while. The rest of the way to Molesworth. Right about. 
18 kilometres out from Yay, and we've got to Molesworth. Uh, the trail doesn't really go into Molesworth. You'd have to take a little detour to get into the town. A very small town there. All downhill since the tunnel down to Molesworth, and apparently in the olden days there were a few accidents for the trains come coming down the hill too fast, and then they get to the bend at the bottom and they'd come off. So. I'm going to keep going now. Four more kilometres to Kathkin. That's where the branch off is to get to to take the line down to Alexandra. So that's my next destination. Crossing a bridge here over a river. Not actually sure which one. Let's keep going. 22 kilometres from Ye. I've just passed Molesworth and I'm in Kathkin. The remains of a station here, very little to be seen, but there's a, a few signs around with various pictures, so you can see what it used to look like once. Uh, just here is where the branch goes off, down to Alexandra, so uh, I'm going to turn down that way right now. Uh, so far it's just been pretty flat since uh, Molesworth. I've uh, been looking around the station a little bit, I've been reading some of the information signs, some interesting history there. Uh, a little bit further ahead, I think, is where the branch off goes, so I'll go and try and find it. About six and a half kilometres into the Alexandra branch line now. I've reached the, uh, the former site of the Coriella station. I can see just looking around here that it was probably once quite a lot going on. A lot of land that would have once been sidings. Now it's just open space. So far from Kathkin to here the trail has looked fairly much the same. Farms and trees. But I think as we get a bit further along there's quite a few nice views to be had. So let's keep going and have a look. Well, I've stopped here at this little shelter that they've made for the riders. The trail keeps going down that way. And I can see off in the distance, right about there, is the town of Alexandra that I'm heading to. It's quite a nice view from here. We've got some mountains in the background. It's been uphill all the way since Coriola, so I'm a little bit puffed at the moment, but I think it's a downhill run from here on into the town, so that's a little bit of a break. Let's keep going and go to town.
Well, I've made it to the old Alexandra station and it's a really cool place. They've got a miniature railway that still uses the station platform. Lots of old original station buildings here. Station equipment, along with all other kinds of old equipment. They've got old tractors and even an old Ford Blitz truck there. So looks like they have some pretty cool things going in this place. It's got a few 1.5 meter social distancing stickers. So that's obviously a, a new addition, but uh, yeah, it looks like it must be a cool place when they're open up and, and doing things. Uh, it's getting a little bit dark now. I've been riding for a while and I've chosen to ride today on the shortest day of the year. So I kind of expected I'd be going home in the dark, but that's what's happening. I've got to turn around and head back towards Kathkin now. So far been a nice ride, quite hilly from Kathkin to here, but still quite nice. And I'm back in Kathkin again. It's actually been about seven months since I was here last. I rode the section from Yay to Alexandra in June, and then lockdown six happened. So I did intend to come here much sooner and finish off the Great Victorian Rail Trail, but these things happen, so it's now December. It's a fairly hot day today, so I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to go, but if I can make it all the way to Mansfield, that'd be nice. I think it's fairly shady most of the way. I've come out onto the platform here because over in the in the car park over there is full of horses. I think there's some kind of a horse group event or something going on, but I'll carefully ride around them so I don't startle the horses and then keep going up to Yark and then Merton and hopefully at least I can get as far as Bonnie Doon today. Apparently Lake Eildon's got a lot of water in the moment, so that'll make some great pictures and some nice scenery. Uh, I think it's going to be a nice day's riding and let's see how far I can get. Things are crook in Tallarook and worse in Mansfield Town. The Mansfield Freight don't run of late for they've closed the railroad down. The grass grown high where the wheels raced by, round the bends on the starry ridge. No music grand over the frosty land as she crossed the Golden Bridge. No smoke hangs low in the sunset glow where the deep lagoons lie still. The sound of steam is a long lost dream over gully, spur and hill. On the stormy nights her stark headlights, where the rain was cold and bleak, Changed the trees to fantasies on the bends of Wild Dog Creek. Now no piston rods like frenzied gods with their magic mystery pull the big grey load up the tunnel road with the black smoke flowing free. Old memories sleep while the night winds creep through the grass round the rusting rail for the days of steam are only a dream with few drivers left to tell the tale. A poem by James Dunn, station master at Cathkin train station from 1939 to 1972. Okay, six ish very easy kilometers from from Kathkin and I've arrived at the old Yark train station there's a platform in front of me that's just a mound of dirt now and behind me is the old freight shed last used in about 1978 when I was one year old a uh, little town here at Yark there's a couple of cafes and you can get some refreshments if you like it's quite a, a cool little looking town but very small uh, I'm gonna keep riding for the moment and I'm gonna head up towards Merton I know it's a very long, steep climb. I remember that from the last time I was here in about 2014, but you know, that's what you come here for, for a bit of exercise, so let's keep going. Well, I'm now 10 kilometers from Yark and I've got six more to go till Merton. The road is just as steep as I remembered it. It's been uphill ever since Yark and it's gonna be still going uphill all the way to Merton. I don't know if it goes downhill again after this or if it stays level, but at least it's gonna be nice coming the other direction when I'm on the way back. Won't have to pedal all the way from Merton to Yark, I think. Still very peaceful out here, very quiet. The, uh, the road is fairly shaded, well, mostly anyway with trees. A lot of farm animals around on either side. Seen a few other people on bikes, but not very many, but it is a Tuesday after all. Probably on a weekend there'll be more. But 
yeah, just catching my breath for a little bit and continuing on towards Merton. Well, after 16 kilometers of climbing, I've made it to Merton. Probably the last two were uh, were downhill, but before that, I reckon was as hard as the ride up to Beechworth from Everton. So it's a serious climb, but it's all flat now. Apparently, I've heard from some other cyclists who are coming the other way. So not much here in Merton. There's a petrol station behind me. Otherwise, not very much here. So I'm going to keep going and try and get to Bonnie Doon. I think there's going to be more there. Perhaps I can get something to eat there and, and fill up my water bottles. Let's go. Over here we have the first sign of Lake Eildon. It's just a little branch coming off, but it's connected to the main lake. We're still about four kilometers from Bonnie Doon, where we see a lot more of the lake there. It's quite warm today. I'm looking forward to getting to Bonnie Doon. Take a rest somewhere, soak up some of the serenity. I think it'll be quite nice. I've made it to Lake Eildon. I'm just in Bonnie Doon. I've just sort of passed the main part of town. The trail didn't go through the center of town, so I kind of missed it. I was hoping somewhere along the trail I could find a, a shop or somewhere at least to fill my water bottles, but uh, I'm still deciding whether to go back and find something or keep going. I still have enough water, I think. I've made it to the old bridge. That's it behind me. That bridge was the old railway bridge. Now it's the rail trail bridge. Uh, the lake's quite full at the moment, so it's actually quite spectacular to stand here and see it. Since Merton, the trail has been fairly flat, nothing much to see really, just farms and, and a bit of a mix of trees here and there. But it's still been a nice ride. The weather is nice for me, so I'm going to ride out over the bridge and, and enjoy the, the actual experience of riding over it with the lake full of water. About six or seven kilometers into the trail out of Bonnie Doon now and they've made a nice little what do they call it stop sit and sip a while stop here for us 
somebody's been kind enough to put up some tables and chairs in the shade and even some water. Two dollar donation for bottled water. Big thank you to whoever put this out here for us. On the final run into Mansfield now. The trail is packed gravel in between two actual railway lines. I think they're a bit far apart to be an actual broad gauge track. I think they're just re reusing the lines. But nice shady run in to the station. Well, this video actually took a lot longer than I expected to come out. On the last few hundred meters on the way into Mansfield, my SD card actually crashed and I lost all of the footage that I'd taken. So I managed to recover it eventually and I've managed to put it together as a video. I lost the last section though when I was actually arriving into Mansfield. So when I get there, the old Mansfield station is still there and there's still a little bit of history information around it and then the town is actually quite big with lots of amenities for you to get food and everything else you want while you're there. The trail was quite big. It was a big effort to do the whole thing. I did it over four different days. Uh, you could do it in less, but it takes a bit of planning to do because there's actually quite big distances as well in between uh, towns. So especially if it's a warm day, you want to make sure you're carrying enough water and food with you because there's not really a lot to buy along the way but there's a lot of uh, railway history still there a lot of the stations are still there uh, there's information as you go and when you get to these towns and the condition of the trail is generally quite good even if it can be quite hilly sometimes it's not too difficult and the surroundings are very typical of uh, central Victoria but it varies a lot of course because the distance is so far that you go through quite a few different kinds of scenery and that actually adds to the whole experience I think. So yeah, in all, if you would like to do the Great Victorian Rail Trail, definitely give it a go, but be well prepared and enjoy it.